Hello and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of things that I have on this little shelf in my office area. So one of the things we're going to look at is this calculator. So this is a Casio Personal M1 electronic calculator. Now I used to have one of these when I was growing up which I was given, um, gifted to me in the early 80s. This one was originally sold at WH Smith's for £7.45, which I don't know what year it was sold, but that would have been a lot of money back then. So here's the calculator itself. And also in the box we have what looks like a little carry case, which I'm just bringing out with one hand. And inside the carry case we have the lid or the flap off of the uh, the case there with some other things scrawled on the back that's interesting it looks like it was actually used for calculating various things at point some point in the past possibly even quite recently petrol 1.36 maybe that was one pound 36 maybe it was 1.36 gallons which would give it sort of you know an older much older time for this calculation, who knows. We also have the rather little instruction book, rather nifty little thing. And certainly when I bought a Casio FX100 in the early 90s, the instruction manual was of a similar sort of size and a similar level of comprehensiveness. It really is comprehensive with various things that you can do, various things you can calculate how to calculate percentages for example, so 12% of 15,000, all of that sort of stuff. Now I'm interested to see if it actually works. One of the features of the calculator is it did have this input socket for um, power. So you could power it with a 3 volt adapter, as long as that 3 volt adapter was capable of providing 0.2 watts. <clears throat> this is back in the time when batteries were still quite expensive, so you couldn't just go out and find a cheap pack anywhere. So, let's see if it works. It's currently set to off. It's the on-off switch. Up for on, down for off. It takes two double A's. <clears throat> Excuse me. Over here we have a couple of double A's, which I'm just removing from the pack. And we're going to take said double A's, pop them in using the correct orientation. So we have negative and positive. It's just something I like to do. Is that? No, that's not right. That, I don't know why. You don't see it when the cover's off or on, rather, but it just makes me feel happier. So let's turn it on. And predictably, and quite sadly, it doesn't appear to work. So let's have a look and see if we've got that orientation incorrect. So let's pop out one of the batteries, <coughs> check the orientation, yep, so orientation for that one is correct, and the orientation for that one is also correct. It is possible that we have a duff pair of batteries. We can verify that using the multimeter. You know, these batteries are a little bit old. They're new, but old, if that makes sense. They've never been used, but they are old. So let's go to direct current. And let's just give those a quick test. 
So unfortunately, or fortunately, both batteries are producing the correct voltage. So one thing we should do now is just do a basic check inside, see if there are any issues with dry joints, wiring, etc. Now, that will need a cross-headed screwdriver to do this. So, there we go, it's actually working better than expected. Okay. Now, many years ago, I did take apart the one that I had uh, when I was going through my taking things apart phase, and it's one of the few items that I took apart that I actually put back together and that still worked afterwards. That was the way I learned about things was by taking them apart, but because I happened to like the little calculator and um, I didn't want to uh, damage it in any way. I carefully dismantled it. After carefully dismantling it, I had a look inside, saw what made it work, saw that it wasn't uh, magic and witchcraft, and then just put it back together again. So that's taken apart. Now what this should mean is hopefully we can gently prise the actual shell apart, as there doesn't seem to be anything else holding it in place. So, let's give that a go quickly. And there we go, comes apart surprisingly easily. So the main chip that's providing us with all of this calculation goodness is an NEC D1877C uh, of another marking of E9424D. There is a few random, well not randomly assigned, but uh, a vacuum fluorescent display. That TDK thing there, which I can only assume may be a transformer for said vacuum fluorescent display. A series of capacitors and resistors, what looks like a little rectifier. And that really is about all there is to it. You've got these little ribbon, it's not even a ribbon connector, it's like these little metal legs that connect the keypad onto the um, unit itself. The switch, as you can see here, is also combined with the DC input and it does look quite corroded, however the actual solder joints themselves appear to be fine. I think one of the first things to do give that a bit of a spray with some switch cleaner, switch and contact cleaner. So it is also quite possible that we just have a duff switch. There we go, so that's some switch cleaning lubricant applied. There we go. Now interestingly, the other piece here, these actually don't connect anywhere. They just seem to provide a loop around for the battery. So the batteries will negative, positive, and then you've just got a piece of metal at the back which just causes it to loop around. So let's see if we can replicate that just using, I don't know, a piece of metal such as, well, the screwdriver will do the job. So let's give that a quick go. So I might need, actually, I'll bear with me and I'll set this up properly. There we go. So we've got a bit of space to work now. So we'll just move this out of the way. Let's switch this to the on position. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is terrible today. Let's see if we can gently place some batteries in the general vicinity, such as like so, and then just 
apply a bit of power to the other side, sorry, a bit of contact to the other side, which doesn't seem to be making full contact. Let's try a slightly flatter surface. These should do. No, nothing being displayed at present. Let's see if we can get the leave this out like so. Let's see if we can put this back in here. I believe this is the correct side. Is it the correct orientation is the next question. So let's have a look at the back panel. Yeah, it is the correct orientation. Actually, I didn't have it turned on, so let's put this here. The switch is now in the on position. And back around, like so. Hold on to it. And would you look at that? We have a zero. Right. I'm going to get some white gold, not the PVC windows, but some toilet roll. Yeah, actually, I have uh, something even better. I have some. What? I don't even know what this is. This was piece of packing material that came with um, my wrist PC and it smells it smells like a tumble dryer um, sheet which is a bit strange anyway let's give this clean up just get rid of some of the residual uh, residual contact cleaner that I had there let's just give this a bit of a general spruce up Dilly, I should use a bit of um, wet and dry for that but not to worry let's put this back into there we are position there we go that can sit across there this can come back over and sit atop there and this can go down like so. Come over to this side. I may need to come in like so. Oh, keep that down. Yeah, I think that is there. So that will need to come over. Always a little bit fiddly this one. I remember this been fiddly when I was younger. There we go. Now what I should be able to do is ever so gently there we go. Ever so gently prise this out of the way. That pops into there. Switch is now in position. And the other two halves should clip together, like so. There we are. Sounds a lot more brutal than it actually is, but that's now clipped together. Let's give it a wipe with uh, the random pleasant smelling wipe. <clears throat> Put the screws back in. So we've got these two little screws that hold the two halves of the case together. There we go, there's one. And here's the other. Both the batteries back in. Pop on the cover. Let 
and turn it on. And it appears to still work, so we've obviously managed to calculate a very simple sum. Uh, let's try the traditional one. 13, 84, 45, 02 times 4 is that. Probably guaranteed to, if I ever get to a monetization level, to have this video demonetized. However, how can you demonetize 55378008? It's a number. And there we go, it does seem to work quite nicely. This would have been the staple of any office desk during the late 70s and early 80s. And it does have quite a nice, rather pleasant aesthetic to it as well. So, <clears throat> this will go back into storage or back onto my shelf. It works, and to keep it working, it's probably a good idea to exercise this on a semi-regular basis. <clears throat> oh, look at this. Somebody's been keeping an actual, almost service history of this. So July 1986, battery, 1.09, 1.9 maybe? Seeing as whomever has had this previously has been keeping a nice log of it. Let's pop down May 2020 switch cleanup. So just add to the history. Right, so let's pop it back into its case, and we'll also keep the, uh, so that's actually funny enough, that's the um, case that it was in, this protective fit, I don't know what it is, but it's perfect size for it, slots in nicely. Pop the instruction book back into there, pop it back in here, it's still got the uh, foam insert as well, which is quite cool. So I'll pop its little service history back in as well. It's quite bizarre to have a service history for a calculator. However, it's a nice little feature. It shows that uh, whoever purchased this originally appreciated the value of things, which means that force forward to now, it's still in pretty nice condition. It can even pop the cover back on as well. There you go. There we go. And done. Anyway, that was a very quick little video. If you found that interesting, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.